Okay, if you get a Bible, open it today to uh, uh, Colossians chapter 3. And while you're there, you can flick over to uh, Hebrews chapter 10. And Father, I thank you for your word. As Sam just said, Lord, it is your word that brings life, your word that brings hope, your word that brings light. And Father, your word brings healing. Father, your word brings a revelation, Lord, and we desperately need to see things that we can't see today. Father, we desperately need to see things that the world can't see today. So, Father, I'm asking today as we speak your word that you would speak through your servant, you would anoint your servant, and we would hear something today that we have not yet heard, we have not yet seen. Father, you are so good. We thank you for Friday. Thank you for Saturday. Thank you that you are at work so profoundly, preparing your church. Help us to be prepared today, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I want to read from uh, Colossians chapter 1, sorry, chapter 3, verse 1. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above. Where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God, set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then all you, so, you also will appear with him in glory. I like when God has a plan because Tracy spoke about the second coming today. And uh, I believe that God wants to speak today about the importance, uh, Paul says here, of setting your minds on the things above and not on the things of the earth. And I want to speak about the importance of having eternal perspective in your thinking. Because uh, in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12, we're actually told to not only believe, but to lay hold of eternal life. And a lot of people, they believe when we speak about eternal life, that it's something that they're going to benefit from and they're going to receive when they die. But Jesus wants us to understand that when he died, he actually imparted to us already, we have eternal life now. He imparted, a, 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 he imparted a life to us. It's an abundant life. And already we have become eternal. When we die, we're just going to shed this earth suit. But already we are eternal beings. Already in, in the spirit we are, Paul says, seated in heavenly places. We are in Christ. And Paul says, we are already citizens of heaven. And when Paul spoke and when Paul ministered and Paul preached and said, Jesus Christ, they had an otherworldliness about them. And, and they had an otherworldliness. They actually spoke as people that didn't belong to this earth. And all the men of old, all the great saints in Hebrews 13, they all referred to as sojourners. They just saw... Earth was something they were passing through, but really they belonged to heaven. And when we have that mindset, we understand that earth really, having been saved, is our assignment, but heaven is our home. And that makes such a big difference to how you view life. And I tell you, every single person who actually does not have that perspective can't see Every person in the world that only sees things in the here and now, only sees reality as what they see and feel and touch, to a degree are under the influence of a lie. Because everybody is eternal. Everybody's existence is eternal. It just depends where you're going to spend it, in heaven or in hell. But if you only think this is just here and now, you're actually already deceived. So God wants us to, he wants us to actually have a focus and have an understanding and, and, and live as people who are eternal. And sometimes it's hard to even wrap your mind around that idea that, that you are already uh, timeless. You're already timeless. And when we actually allow our minds to be focused eternally and not just live, it's so easy to live with your head just down, Walking, just believing, thinking about all you see, touch, feel, smell. 
And I believe it's one of the reasons the, the church universal suffers and, and, and suffers to walk into its, at the fullness of its calling because we've lacked this eternal dimension. Everyone's believing for their promise to be received today and now. But Jesus says a lot of the things you believe for, you're going to receive in this life and the life to come. But Paul says this in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I've mentioned this a couple of weeks ago, but it's worth mentioning again. Paul was somebody who served God, and he served God joyfully. He was able to write the, the, the letter to the um, Philippians, and it's called, you know, the letter really should be called an ode to joy. All the way through it, he says, rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. And he's in a prison, and that prison in those days was really a dungeon. It's like a hole in the ground. It was wet and dark and moist. And, you know, <laughs> you were bound to have a hard time you're in there. And, and Paul, Paul actually referred to, you know, not only was he put in a prison many, many times, but he was shipwrecked. He was beaten with rods many, many times. He was in the sea a day and a night a number of times. He was constantly betrayed and always defamed. He was mocked, called a false apostle. Whatever you, difficulties you could imagine someone going through in life, Paul had them in spades. But this is what he said. He said, this is what about his difficulty. He says, therefore, we do not lose heart in 2 Corinthians 4, chapter 16. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is re being renewed day by day for our light afflictions, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are seen are are eternal. So Paul had this capacity to go through suffering and go through terrible place and say, it's only light and momentary because what I see is something that's, that's much bigger than the here and now. What I see is my life is eternal. It has eternal meaning. And you know, uh, if you have that attitude, your suffering can be. You can get a different perspective on suffering. You can have a different perspective on hard times. You can have a different perspective on difficulties. But you know, if you don't have that perspective, when you suffer and you get afflicted and you will as a Christian, your suffering becomes large and continuous. Instead of momentary and light, it becomes large and continuous. If all you think is just your life is just in the here and now. But when you actually understand there's a deeper purpose, my suffering is actually working for me, a way to glory, eternally. And we'll get to that later. Your suffering takes on a different perspective. You know, when you, when you actually have a suffer, uh, an eternal perspective also, um, I just love the, there's a contrast in the book of Genesis between Lot and Abraham. And Abraham walked by faith. He walked into all his destiny. He walked into his calling. He achieved all that God called him to do. And he walked into what's called the blessing of Abraham. Lot was really uh, a failure. And his children were a failure. And the difference was Lot couldn't resist the temptations of the world. The, the world, and we're told not to love the world. That's the value system of the world. You know that says the most important thing is for you to have a set of Nikes. The most important thing is for you to look good. The most important thing is your appearance. All that sort of. So the world has a system, and, and Lot saw the bright lights of Sodom, and he, was, and he, it's a, he loved the world, and it, sooner or later he was in Sodom. And, and, but Abraham never fell for the allure of the world. He actually walked in his sojourn, never even had a home. He walked and lived in tents and just followed God and was a man of faith all his days. The world didn't destroy his walk. The world, the lure of the world didn't destroy him. And the reason, the difference between the two is it says, Abraham was looking for a city and, a, and whose founder and builder is God. In other words... He wasn't really interested in what happens here. He was interested and he was looking for something that wasn't available in this world. He was looking for something that was heavenly and looking for something that would only please God. You know, we're, we're also told to be generous and to give. And sometimes people struggle with that idea of giving. 
But, you know, when you have, uh, Jesus said in Matthew 6, he said, uh, when you give, when you give, you are laying out for yourself. Do not lay out for yourselves treasure on earth where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal, but lay out for yourselves treasure in heaven. Because when you give to the things of the kingdom, neither moth nor rust can destroy it, break in and steal it. Because when you invest in the things of heaven, you know it pays like one. Do you understand compounding interest? When you invest in the things of the kingdom, it pays one billion percent compounding interest. What you lay up is going to increase. What you lay up will always increase and increase if it's a kingdom investment. But when you buy that Mercedes from day one, it's rotting. But when you have an eternal perspective, you're happy to give because you actually know you're investing and laying up for treasure and there's going to be a reward. And you know, this passage that I started reading with, it says that when you have a, a, an eternal perspective, so set your minds on things above. And the very next verse, it says, Therefore put to death your members which are of the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion. Because when you think eternally, you know what you think of when you think eternally? You think there is going to be a day of judgment. And, and you know when, when there is a day of judgment, if you're, a, if you're not a believer, it's heaven or hell. But if you're a believer and you're saved, that day of judgment isn't about heaven. It's not about salvation. It's not about heaven and hell. But that day of judgment is about rewards. And this is what the message I want to focus on today. People that have an eternal perspective, what God wants to put in us today is when, when we speak about eternal perspective, we think about heaven, but we also think about the return of Christ. And this is what Revelation 22 says, as Christ is coming, and I believe he's coming is, is close, and it says, behold, I am coming quickly, but he's not only coming quickly, but my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. Christ is coming. He's coming quickly, but he's actually coming with a reward. And someone who has an eternal perspective is aware of those rewards. You know, you're not going to endure persecution. You're not going to endure suffering if you don't have a, 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 a view of the rewards of heaven. I want to tell you, the rewards of Christ is the end time provision of God for a church in persecution. It's the, it's, the, it's the key to overcoming is seeing that Christ has a reward for every act of faith. He's coming and his reward is with him to give us to what? According to our confession, to according to our belief. No, he said according to your works. According to your works, there shall be a reward. And... You know, the, 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 reward, the rewards that Jesus is going to give to each believer is it's an individual reward. If you go to uh, Matthew chapter 5, Jesus said this. He said, blessed are you when they revile and persecute you. Sorry, that's, that's, that's not the scripture I was asked, but I'll read it anyway. And all kinds of evil against you, false not for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. A passage I was after is in 1 Corinthians 3, chapter 8. And it says this. It says, Now he who plants and he who waters are one. And each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. So every act of faith you do, and, and this is where I think the work that works has got a bad name because, uh, let me explain that. The bad name of works just refers to working for your salvation. We don't do that. We're saved by faith. However, having been saved by faith, Christians should work for God. Christians should work because there is such a thing as a dead faith. James walks about a faith without works. 
So Christians ought to be fruitful and productive because it's on the basis of your fruitful, productive works that you're going to be rewarded. And this is what's going to happen in the judgment day for every... This is what God wants you to give a vision of. There is going to be reward for every act of faith. And each one's work, in verse 13, says, will become clear. The day will declare it. Some will be... Test, it will be your work will be revealed by fire. And if anyone's work he has built on it endures, he will receive a reward. So he, Christ is coming... And he's going to reward you as a Christian on the basis of every act of obedience and every step of faith you took for him. How wonderful is that? You know, even a cup of water you've given to somebody, a righteous person because Holy Spirit ordered you. There is a reward for that. There's a reward that God wants you to have a vision of, to see, to have perspective of, because, you know, you think of people like Moses, and you think how great he was, and what he had to endure, and what he had to leave as a prince of Egypt, what he all had to lay down to follow Christ, and all the things he had to give up, but this is what the Word of God says. Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. How? Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasure of, in Egypt, for he looked to the reward. And so you, you, you can't just be, uh, say, I'm going to grip my teeth I'm going to get through this. I'm going to suffer. I'm going to do what I'm going to call with. God wants to give you a vision for every act you do, for every work of obedience, for every door you go through, for every kind act that you do. There is a concrete reward for you laid up in heaven. And you say, How, you show me this in the, pastor script, in the Scriptures, Pastor. I tell you, Jesus told many parables like this. He said, I'm going to give you grace. I'm going to give you favor. I'm going to give you what's called minors. I'm going to give you uh, gifts. And he says, it's actually how you employ those is going to be determined how you're going to be used eternally. And this is why God wants you to give you a vision of. Eternity is not sitting in a cloud with, with some kind of harp. In eternity, some people are going to reign with Christ in the millennium and rule. That means make judgments through wisdom. And they're going to rule over 10 cities or five cities. And it's, those people are going to rule according to the work they've done in this life. The rewards, they will be rulers over 10 cities and five cities because God has given them gifts. They've been faithful to employ them. They didn't bury them. They worked what God had given them. They used what God had given them. They applied faith to what God had given them. They'd, they'd been productive for the kingdom. And it's God says, when I come, I'm not going to forget you. I'm going to reward you. I'm going to reward you. And the fact that Moses knew there was more to life than what he saw. That after he died, there was a certain reward. The, the, the afflictions, what he had to forego, the things of Egypt, the temptations were nothing to him. For he looked to the reward. Reward. And I believe very few Christians have a view and a focus on eternity. And it's so important because as the, I believe the world could come into a time of difficulty, of affliction, of persecution. And how are you going to endure? Christ's rewards are his provision for an overcoming end time church. Because the word of God says, blessed are you when they revile and persecute and they say all kinds of things falsely for my sake. But rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets also before you. So the fact that there's a reward in heaven, the reward in heaven is actually a compensation. It's a real knowledge that no matter what you go through, no matter how hard it gets, 
It's light and it's momentary because you're going to be rewarded and you're going to enjoy it and you're going to rule and reign with Christ forever. Oh, I get excited about this. I've been through stuff. I've been through challenges. I've been to nations, not because I wanted to go. I've been to nations because I was sent to nations. And I've been through hard stuff. And many, many times, Christ has reminded me that we're just passing through. We're just passing through. This, you know what it is? I want to read you this verse. It's very important. It's from Hebrews chapter 10. It says this, Yet for a little while, for yet a little while, he who is coming will come and will now tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. You know what that means? It means now is only now because of what's coming. Now is only now because of what's coming. And what is now? He says, because of what's coming, now is the time to live by faith. Because of what's coming, now the just will live by faith. Not by what you see. Now is the time to live by faith and do the works of faith. Why? Because I tell you what eternity is for. Eternity is to celebrate your victories, but this life is your opportunity to win them. This is what it is. This life is simply the opportunity to win victories for Christ by faith. They are the works. They are the works. This is the opportunity to be productive. And anyone that God wants to do is give you eternal vision to get your head up, to lift up and see this is this life that's being given you is opportunity. And you've got to understand what Christ has given me. What gift has he given me? I need to work it. I want to work it. I want to work it because when he comes, he is going to come with a great reward. He is going to come with a custom-made reward. And now is the time where we work and earn those rewards. Because you know your rewards are proportionate to your labor. They're, they're, they're proportionate to your labor. And now is the time, because of what's coming later, to live by faith. And I believe Christ is coming very, very soon. Many times he's given me this scripture. I know what my reward is. You know what my reward is? When we planted this church, Christ told me, he said, I want you to found the church in Revelation chapter, th- chapter 3. And he says, this is what you're going to do. You're going to keep my word and you're going to not deny the faith. And he says, this is what I'll do for you. I'll give you an open door. And God has opened door faithfully for this church. And he says, because you've kept my commandments. He says, I will keep you from the hour of trial that's coming upon the whole earth. Interesting, the trial now is the first one I've ever seen that's come upon the whole earth. And I believe we are a protected people. We are kept from it. But then he says, he says, what's going to happen? He says, behold, I'm quickly, I'm coming quickly. Hold fast what you have that no one may take your crown. There it is. Many people in this church are going to have a crown. He says, I'm going to make you a pillar in the temple of my God. Get a vision for it. A temple, a pillar in the temple of my God. And I'm going to write on him the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem. I'll write on him my new name. That's why I'll never be tattooed because I won't have place for the tattoo God's going to put on me. I see a reward and I know Christ is coming. Not that I'm going to sit on a cloud with him forever, but Paul said, I've kept the faith. I've, what did he say? I've kept the faith. I've fought the fight. I've run the race. Why? Now the time is for, there is a crown of righteousness laid up for me. That reward, that crown is what made him run. That crown is what made him faith, uh, fight. That tr- crown is what made him keep the faith because he knew there was a certain crown of righteousness laid up for those who belong to Christ. And so I feel God is, is wanting to lift our, our minds today. And our 
visions today and say, when you have a vision of eternal, eternity, it helps you overcome sin. You just don't go there. Because you know there's a certain judgment and there's a reward. It empowers giving because, you know, when you invest in that car, the moment you drive it out the showroom, it rots. But when you sow, when you sow, deny yourself and sow into the kingdom, my goodness, the interest you're going to discover, the dividend you'll receive in heaven. When you see a reward, it's going to help you endure persecution and suffering, any suffering you get. When you understand, it's only 70 short years here, 70 short years, and then there's forever before you, forever, the glory of Christ. And, and when, you're, when you suffer here, you, you, you actually bring God glory. That makes your suffering truly appear completely different to someone who doesn't have that eternal hope. It makes it seem light. It's not to, it's not to mitigate it, but actually it seems light and momentary when you actually see it in perspective of forever. And some people here, truly, some people here, you're not going to sit on a cloud, but you're going to rule and reign with Christ. You are going to be trusted because you've been faithful with what God's given you in this life. God is going to give you dominion, and you're going to be in partnership with him, and you're going to reign and rule over cities. Reign and rule over cities because you were faithful simply with what God gave you. And I've said many, many times, the greatest tragedy for a Christian is to die with the music still in him. That is it, you've never sung your song. The thing, the grace God give you, the, the gift God give you, you've never used it. Because the Bible says, you know, some will rule over no cities. But God wants to, you to give you a perspective that, that he is faithful, that this is not all there is, that Christ sees every action. He sees everything you go through. You know, the word God says, as you go through things, there's a host of witnesses that have been through, they're cheering you on because they also walk by faith. They also endured the, the, the trials of this life, but they endured because all of them could see beyond this world. They could see the faithfulness of God and they knew there was going to be great justice and reward for every bit of faithfulness they displayed to God, every bit of obedience they walked with God, every time they trusted with God. God saw it all and he was going to reward them. I just want to say, do you, do, you have that vi do you have that vision? Do you have that perspective in your thinking that in a little while, he who is coming will come and will not tarry. But now, the just shall live by faith. Now is the time, because of what's coming later, for nothing but faith. And the works of faith. Why? Why is now the time of faith? I want to tell you something. When you get to heaven, you don't need faith. You see face to face. This is the only time you get to please God. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. This is the only time you get to win your rewards, to earn your rewards. That's what earth is. That's what this, this opportunity is as a Christian. And so many Christians, they get sidetracked into being offended or doing this or thinking that. But focus just on, you know, dead doctrine. But Christ called you and he wants to partner with you. He wants to make you productive. That's why he gave you the Holy Spirit. And he wants you to see that he is coming. And everything that you've got to endure, every hard time you've been through. I, I got a vision a little while ago. Uh, and it's so encouraging for people in this church. And just to, just to finish, it was about David, and it was about when he went to, he came back, 
because he was on the wrong side. He was with the Philippians and he was about to go to war against Israel. So God had to stop that. And he went back to his base, Ziklag. And when he got there, it was the hardest day of his life. Everything was ruined, everything was burned and everything was taken. And so he prayed about it and God said, go after them and you'll recover all, which is a sermon in its own. But as he did, he took 600 men and they went. And then I think it was 200 of them just couldn't go on. And they had to stay and they had to mine the gear. And, uh, and the 400 went to the battle. And the 400 went to the battle and it had an extraordinary victory. They plundered the enemy. And I felt it was a, pi- a picture of our trips we've done into Pakistan. That, that we've gone and, and we've plundered the enemy. But you know, when David came back, those who couldn't go with him, just because they, they, had, they, had, they just couldn't go. There were reasons they couldn't go. David established something. He said, the plunder, which is the reward, is going to be distributed. And his men said, no, 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 no. We're the ones that went to the battle. And he said, no, 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 no. He says, those who stayed with the gear, they get equal. And see, your reward, some, those people couldn't go, but they did what they could do. And some people here, as we've gone to Pakistan, and you've stayed, you've come into this, this, this church, and you've prayed at 2 a.m., 3 a.m. in the morning, I want to tell you, your reward is the same as those that went. It's a great reward. It's a great reward. All you've got to do is what you're called to do. One talent person only has to do one talent. But you're going to be rewarded. Isn't that one? Isn't that encouraging? Isn't that encouraging? Christ is coming. Don't wait this life. Don't waste this life. Be productive. Have a vision that eternity is where you, what you are now, what you are now, and position yourself. Position yourself to be used by God, to partner with him in the millennium, but forever ruling and reigning. I don't know what we're going to be doing in heaven. I don't know if there's planets to occupy, but I want to tell you, some people are going to be given roles and because they've been trusted. They use what they were given here faithfully, and they're going to be rewarded by God. The Bible says, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind can even imagine what God has laid up for those who love him. So great is his reward. Let me pray for you. Let me pray for you. Father, I want to praise you and I want to thank you, Lord. That, Lord, we are per- people that you have loved, that you have chosen, and you have called for a purpose to partner with you, Lord, in extending your kingdom. And, Father, though there be opposition, Father, I ask today you give us your perspective. You give us a perspective in our mind, truly, Lord, that we are already eternal people. We are already citizens of heaven and this earth is simply our assignment. Father, strengthen us today. Strengthen us. But encourage us, Lord. Encourage us that you are coming. Your word says there'll be mockers in the last day, but Lord, you are coming. And Lord, you're not only coming, but you're coming to distribute. Rewards where some will rule and reign with you. Father, encourage us today. Those that are suffering, those that may be going through difficulties in their families, in their homes, with their children, with their health. Father, give them that perspective of Paul that it's only light. It's only light. Help them to give them perspective that their suffering, the way they trust you, brings you glory. Help them to see, Lord, every time they trust you, every little act of faith, when they yield to you, you see it, Lord. You see everything, Lord. And in your goodness, you're going to bountifully reward every single act, Lord. Father, there is nothing that you miss. There is nothing that you miss. Father, I thank you that you are just. You are just. And you will distribute 
extraordinary blessings that will last for eternity to your children. Help us to see it in the Spirit, Lord. Help us to see it in Jesus' name. And all the people said, Amen, amen. Moses endured because he was looking to the reward. I hope I've given you a vision. Not only of Christ coming today, but the good things he's got for us. Amen. Stand and praise him because he's good.